What is going on, everybody? I hope you're doing fantastic. I am doing very, very well today because we finally get to open up another pack of new Phyrexia. I absolutely love this set. There's so much value to be had in this one. Always a lot of fun to open a pack where you know even at the common slot there are decent cards. Uh, that being said, Gataxian Probe just got banned in Popper, so it's probably a little less valuable now, but still very, very fun stuff. Very excited to open this one up. Of course, we are going to go through this as if we are drafting this set, so we'll hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick would be. I did not draft during this time, uh, though I did collect a little bit during this time, so I do know some of the cards, so we'll see how things go. Uh, Suture Priest is our first card here. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a white. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can gain a life. And then whenever a creature enters the battlefield uh, under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. Very interesting card. Uh, I do think that it's kind of decent. Uh, I don't think it's amazing. Obviously, it's not an aggressive card by any means, but if it sticks around, it's going to gain you a decent amount of life, which does buff you. And then not only that, but it does deal enough damage while the opponent is playing creatures that I feel like that could be worth it. Again, all dependent off on if it sticks around long enough. Uh, don't think it's first pickable necessarily, but uh, not too bad, actually. Toxic Nim is a 4-1 for 4 and 2 black. It features Infect, so this creature deals damage uh, to creatures in the form of negative 1, negative 1 counters, and then to players in the form of poison counters. Uh, if you don't know, if you get 10 poison counters, you lose the game. Sort of like cutting your life total for the opponent in half, like immediately, uh, which has made Infect very, very powerful. Uh, and then on top of that, you can pay a black and regenerate Toxic Nim. I'm not a huge fan of this card. Uh, I think it dies very, very easily. Yes, you can regenerate it, which is fine, uh, but you do have to then leave up mana subsequently for that every single turn. Not a huge fan of that. So honestly, between the two, I would rather have the Suture Priest over the Nim for sure. Uh, Scrapyard Salvo is a sorcery for one and two red. It deals damage to target player equal to the number of artifacts in your graveyard. Uh, so artifacts were pretty prominent during this set uh, or this block if I'm not mistaken uh, I might be a little no, I think that's correct uh, if I remember correctly uh, So it is possible to deal a decent amount of damage with this However, uh, I would much rather be in an artifact based deck or have a high number of artifacts Before picking up this card because it's very possible to pick this up and then just not really get there on the artifacts end of things and so for that reason, I don't find it very good. Uh, again, late in the pack, late in the game, if you're uh, if you're in that artifact stack, maybe pick one of these up because it is going to deal a decent amount of damage for only three mana. But outside of that, I don't like it. Uh, Chained Throat Seeker is a 5-5 five, five, for five and a blue. Uh, also features Infect, and it can't attack unless the defending player is poisoned. Now this is a really interesting card because six mana for a 5-5 five, five with Infect would be awesome. Absolutely love it. It's going to deal with a lot of creatures, and if not the creatures, it's going to deal with the player very, very quickly. Literally in two hits, it can kill the opponent. But that little clause on there that says if they don't have a poison counter, it can't attack is pretty big. That being said, it can still block, which is interesting. So it is definitely going to be a, a wall for the opponent, regardless of how uh, if, if that opponent has poison counters or not, which I do like. Uh, I think so far this is probably honestly the pick just because it is kind of a big bomb uh, If you can get the poison counters on the opponent, it's especially very very good. So for that reason uh, I do think so far it's the pick uh, Viridian harvest is an enchant artifact for one green uh, when the enchanted artifact is put into a graveyard you gain six life Absolutely uninterested in a card like this. Uh, I'm not a fan of enchant stuff anyway, just because it opens yourself up for two for ones. In this case, it's actually okay if you get two for one because you gain that six life, but not really worth it. Uh, I don't think. I don't think a card like this where you might gain six life is worth putting in your deck. Uh, it's very possible that whatever artifact you stick this on could just stick around for the rest of the game, in which case this literally did nothing but cost you a mana. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm not interested in this at all. Uh, War Report is an instant for three and a white. You gain life equal to the number of creatures on the battlefield plus the number of artifacts on the battlefield. Uh, again, life gain in general, I'm not a huge fan of. I know we talked about the Suture Priest. I get it. But 
that is a body that has some subsequent life gain on it as well as some drain on the other side it gets to drain the opponent life uh, opponent's life excuse me uh, which i also like this literally just gains you life and it's a one-shot deal I do not like that at all. I find uh, life gain cards like this in particular tend to be very, very bad and limited. And I feel like they're a bit of a trap for especially new players uh, who think, you know, if I just gain a li enough life, then I prolong the game and I can't really lose. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You will eventually lose if you just only gain life. That does not work. Uh, so very uninterested in that. Uh, Pristine Talisman is an artifact for three mana of any color. You can tap it and add one of uh, one generic mana, excuse me, to your mana pool, and then you can gain one life. Kind of like this card, um, potentially better than the Throat Seeker uh, for a couple reasons. So the Throat Seeker is obviously a very uh, situational bomb, we'll say. Uh, the Talisman is great in any deck, and it gives you incidental life gain, which is going to keep you in the game against some of the aggro decks uh, if you really need it. It also ramps you, which gets you further to your bombs, and no matter what color you're in, it's going to be perfect. Honestly, uh, I think that's just too good to pass up, at least so far. Uh, I just, I definitely think that that's the pick. Uh, Spire Monitor is a 3-3 for 4 and a blue. It has flash, so you can play it anytime you can play an instant, uh, and it also has flying. Uh, so this is an interesting one. I do like cards like this. Uh, I think they're very good. But I tend to pick them towards the middle of the pack, not necessarily early in the pack, because I don't think this is a defining card. This is the kind of card that if you're in a blue deck and you need a couple flyers, this is great. Uh, it comes in, so hopefully surprisingly, you can maybe surprise block an opponent's creature or something like that. And then it deals a good bit of damage in the air, which is perfect. Blue white flyers, eat your heart out. That's exactly what you want. However, that's not necessarily a reason to be in blue. It's just a decent blue card. Uh, and so for that reason, not interested in first picking, but I do actually really like it. It's very solid. <clears throat> Razor Swine is a 2-1 for 2 and a red. It has first strike as well as infect. Uh, very interesting. I kind of like this card a lot because of that first strike. I think that's really good. I don't think I like it more than the Talisman, but this is a very aggressive card for sure. Uh, it's going to be able to get in some damage uh, without a doubt uh, and hopefully deal with either the opposing creatures or again deal a lot of damage to the opponent uh, in the form of poison counters in which case they will just lose pretty quickly so definitely like this in a red deck win style deck uh, this is the exact kind of card that you would like however the pristine talisman being so open and so good i find that to be the picks uh, again still so far uh, Reaper of Shieldred is a 2 5 for 4 and a black. It has Infect, and then whenever a source deals damage to Reaper of Shieldred, that source's controller gets a poison counter. So, um, I don't really like this card. Uh, for 5 mana, you're getting a 2 5. That seems pretty bad. Yes, it has Infect, but I still don't think it's very good. Uh, and then whenever a source deals damage to it, that source's controller gets a poison counter most likely they're just going to try and kill spell this. They're not going to attack into it. Uh, and so very, very likely that this doesn't really do that much with that ability. Uh, if they burn it, technically they get a poison counter. That's fine. But uh, in general, I don't find this card very useful. I feel like they just play around it very hard and then it doesn't matter. It's not like this card ends the game by any means. So uh, definitely not interested in that. Necro Pouncer. Uh, is an artifact equipment for six mana. It is a living weapon, so when it enters the battlefield, you put a zero zero black germ creature token onto the battlefield and then attach this to it immediately. Uh, the enchanted creature gets plus three, plus one, and has haste, which is pretty interesting, actually. Uh, unfortunately, I don't like it too much just because it's too highly costed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, getting a three one with haste for six is terrible. <laughs> um, just in general, that's very, very bad, I think. <coughs> excuse me guys uh, but I do like that it is recursive and that you can equip this to multiple other creatures if you need to in that regard it's pretty good because it gives any other subsequent creatures that you play haste which is great but in general I feel like it's just way too expensive not super interested mind crank what an interesting card so this is an artifact for two mana whenever an opponent loses life that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into his or her graveyard this is actually part of an infinite combo, which is really funny. Uh, it's the Minecraft combo. It's like a budget jank deck. Very, very fun. Uh, however, not necessarily very, very good. I do think that uh, a card like Minecraft can be great in limited. Absolutely great, in fact. 
to the point where I could conceive uh, seeing a world where I would first pick it just because uh, that mill actually is very, very good. And if you're losing or if your opponent's losing life, that's great. However, a lot of stuff has infect in this set. <laughs> Uh, and that's a bit of a nombo with this. So if they get a poison counter, they're not losing life. Uh, and so if you're in the infect deck or if you end up with some infect in your deck, it's a very, very bad combination with mind crank because it just doesn't do anything. Um, <clears throat> so for that reason, it's a little bit weird that it is in this set. That being said, though, there's definitely some room for this card. Uh, it, being able to mill a bunch of cards in limited tends to be pretty good. You're not going to win the game with milling them with a card like this because obviously you're going to be dealing more light, more damage to them before they mill all their deck, generally speaking. Uh, but it's still a pretty powerful card. You're ditching a lot for that. So I like it. Still probably not more than the Talisman. I think the Talisman is just so good uh, in any deck because it is ramp and life gain. I think that's the way to go. We do have our rare here, which is Bludgeon Brawl. It's an enchantment for two and a red. Each non-creature, non-equipment artifact is an equipment with equip cost X, and the equipped creature gets X plus zero, where X is the artifact's converted mana cost. Very, very bad card. Unfortunately, this is very much a commander card, if anything, and even there, I don't know if it's great. I tend not to like this stuff uh, at all. We did get a foil here, which is Gremlin Mine. Uh, it's an artifact for one mana. You can pay one and tap it and sack it, and it deals four damage to target artifact creature. Uh, you can also pay one, tap it, and sack it, and remove up to four charge counters from target non-creature artifact. Uh, this is a bit too specific, in my opinion. Uh, hitting artifact creatures only, in particular, is a little bit of the weird part with this. The charge counter thing is very rarely going to come into play, in my opinion. Uh, I might be missing a few cards in this set and just off the top of my head and so for that reason there may be some instances where that's very good. Generally speaking I don't think it will be. 4 damage to target artifact creature can be great if they have an artifact creature. Uh, it's not necessarily guaranteed that they will. And so for that reason, uh, honestly it's a little bit between Mind Crank and Pristine Talisman. But I think I would go for the Talisman just because it is probably the safest pick and that it's going to be good no matter what deck you end up in and that buffer to your life total is going to be very, very helpful if you do find yourself up against an aggro deck. So that would be my pick. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you agree, disagree, what you like about the packs, whatever. If you have a pack suggestion, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I would be happy to pick that up and we can open it up on this, on this uh, series. Uh, but with that, I think I'm going to get out of here. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.